there, this is Taylor Potts, an elementary educator from Freehill, New Jersey, and a student at New Jersey City University. In today's podcast, I will be discussing the segmenting and pre-training principles. These principles were introduced to me from Ruth Clark and Richard Mayer in their book, E-Learning and the Science of Instruction, Proven Guidelines for Consumers and Designers of Multimedia Learning, the fourth edition. First, I will be defining the principles and explain the importance of applying them in a distance education. In the first half of this episode, we will be discussing the segmenting principle. In education, the principle of segmenting is breaking a lesson into manageable segments or parts. By breaking up a continuous lesson into parts or bite-sized segments, we are supporting students when learning complex and new material. As educators, we don't want to overwhelm or overload the learner's cognitive system. We also don't want to leave out some of the elements or steps in an explanation because that would destroy the accuracy of the lesson. This is why helping the learner manage the complexity by breaking the lesson into segments, scaffolding the lesson is important. Many times when lessons are presented without applying segmenting, essential overload occurs. A student does not have sufficient cognitive capacity to engage in the processing to understand the topic. Too much information was presented at once and all together. As educators, there are many ways we can avoid essential overload for our students. One simple way we can avoid it is by adding a continue button in a presentation or flip video. Each segment can be brief, as little as 10 seconds. The students would then have time to process the information on their own before clicking the continue button to go to the next step or segment. By providing students with only a small amount or bite-sized content, they are engaging in essential processing without being overwhelmed or overloaded. Plus, we know as educators that students learn at their own rate. This allows learners to take their time processing the content or accelerate their learning if ready and able to. To help you understand how and why the segmenting principle works, a few studies have been conducted where learners learn the same content, but one group had nonstop continuous learning and the second group had segmented learning. The result in multiple studies was clear. Students performed better on assessments and learned more with the segmented lesson. Now, it is important for a segmented lesson to not just have a pause button, but to actually stop on its own and have a continue button. It has been found that when a continuous lesson is being taught, the students do not click the pause button on their own. Therefore, it's crucial for a segmented digital lesson to stop automatically for the learner. Then, they can process the information just taught and click continue on their own. This reminds me of the EdTech tool EdPuzzle on edpuzzle.com. This was a tool many teachers utilized during the 2020 pandemic. Teachers are able to create their own video lessons or use an already existing YouTube video lesson. They then can break up the video into separate parts. When a student watches the segmented video, the video will automatically pause. Students can be prompted to stop and jot in a text box, summarizing what they just learned or answer a multiple choice or open-ended question. When ready, the learners then continue to the next bite-sized segment of the video lesson at their own pace after they had time to process the material. Edpuzzle is a tool that applies the segmenting principle for educators, especially in distance education. 
Now that you have a good understanding of the segmenting principle, let's discuss the pre-training principle. The pre-training principle is ensuring that students know the names and characteristics of key concepts prior to a lesson. The benefit of applying this principle is that students will understand the vocabulary in a lesson already. Just like the segmenting principle, the pre-training principle is helping the student's cognitive system by not overloading it. In situations where complex material is being taught, it is helpful if some of the processing, the pre-training, is done in advance. The pre-training principle can be helpful to educators this fall starting off the school year with full remote instruction. Teachers can pre-train by providing a quick orientation session at the start of a Zoom or Google Hangout session. During that session, teachers can show different parts of the virtual classroom. This can be Zoom or Google Hangout features as well as Google Classroom features. This pre-training can be followed up by some introductory exercises where students then use those features. This would be a great idea for the first day of school. An example of applying the pre-training principle in an academic lesson can be learning the parts of a sound wave, such as a trough, wavelength, and amplitude first. By introducing these concepts prior to a video-based lesson on sound waves, we are allowing the students to process the new terms and information instead of a continuous video lesson on sound that would overwhelm with too much complex information at once. When the students hear academic vocabulary for sound, such as wavelength, in a lesson after pre-training has been done, they are then able to devote their cognitive processing to building a mental model of a sound wave and how it relates to the other material presented in the lesson. As educators thrown into remote learning during the pandemic, we can apply this principle by identifying key concepts to introduce and pre-train the students with. Better yet, we can apply the segmenting and pre-training principles at once. For example, the first 10 to 30 seconds of a video can be introducing keywords. The video can then automatically pause, allowing time for the student to process the keywords. Then, when ready to, they can click the continue button to the start of the segmented lesson. As a fourth grade teacher teaching a changing earth science unit, I can apply both principles when teaching the layers of the earth. My video lesson can start with a diagram of the Earth's layers. The diagram would introduce the words crust, mantle, and core. I can embed an automatic pause in the video using Edpuzzle. When the students are ready, they then can click the continue button to learn about each layer more. The entire video lesson would be segmented pausing at different parts, allowing the students to take in what they just learned. So that's it. Those are the segmenting and pre-training principles. The principles can be applied in the classroom and definitely should be applied in distance education. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and hope you join me for the next episode on the Best Practices in Distance Education podcast with me, Taylor Potts.